What's up everybody? It's Amy here from Amy's Art Alchemy and your host of the A3 ATC Swap Group. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am so glad that you stopped by. Today I am bringing you a new tutorial. This tutorial I have been planning for a really long time, but let's face it, there is just not enough hours in the day to do all of the things. However, I received a lovely gift in the mail from my friend from Ireland. Her name is Marissa Hayes. You can find her on Instagram at mhayes84. She is a member of our A3 International ATC Swap Group over on Instagram, a very talented artist and a very sweet friend. And along with her artist trading cards, she sent me a gift. This gift, as I mentioned, goes along with this tutorial because it is something that I've wanted to make for a long time and I've just been putting it off to do other things. However, when she sent me what she made, I knew it was time to go ahead and make one myself because I was just so excited about it and thought, why not do it today? So today I am excited to share with you a beautiful tea bag wallet. That's right, a tea bag wallet. I know my last tutorial, I shared with you guys a tea bag pocket pouch. So this is a little bit different. Um, this one is made of fabric. This one is made from Marissa. She made me this beautiful tea bag wallet and I am so excited to receive it, Marissa. This was so nice of you. Look at her painting. She does such a beautiful job. Go check her out on Instagram, mhayes84. Um, an amazing artist from Ireland. She painted this crow on there. It's got beautiful fabric. She filled the inside with some tea from Ireland, which I am so excited to receive because I think it is really nice to receive teas from all over the world from your friends from all over the world. So I was really excited about this, Marissa. So on the inside, she has these beautiful fabric pockets and then she also made a card that matched the outside. So I thought this was a super cute idea and it gave me just the inspiration I needed to go ahead and create a tutorial that I have been planning for for a really long time. So you guys know how much I love Alice in Wonderland. As you can see in the background, I was watching the movie as I made this tutorial and I had to do the Mad Hatter theme because I mean, tea, Mad Hatter, I love Alice in Wonderland. So I am excited to share with you guys a tutorial on how I made this super cute Mad Hatter tea bag wallet. So I hope that you guys will enjoy this tutorial. If you haven't seen one of these before, they make wonderful gifts. Uh, perfect for the tea drinker, perfect as a happy meal. These would make great stocking stuffers as well. Anybody would love to receive these. Even if you're not a tea drinker, you can always put gift cards inside of these or um, letters, anything that you want inside these. But this one is designed to be a tea bag wallet. So in here, I was actually demonstrating the lovely tea that my friend Marissa sent me and I'm excited to try that. I just wanted to test out my tea bag wallet and fill it up with those teas. So I hope that you guys enjoy this tutorial. If you are interested in learning on how you can make your tea bag wallet and see me paint this Mad Hatter, then keep on watching. If you do not want to sit and watch me draw and paint the Mad Hatter, I will put the timestamp in the description below where the tutorial actually starts. So I decided to use this piece of polyester. It was just a scrap piece of fabric that I had and I wanted to prep the surface a little bit with clear gesso. Um, I've never really painted on polyester before. I've painted on sheets and um, cotton, a whole bunch of types of fabric, but I have never painted on this type before, but I thought why not try it today? So I am just prepping it with a little bit of clear gesso just so the paint um, adheres well and doesn't just seep through. So this was all experimentation process. Um, I really was just hoping that it would turn out well. I did do a sample before 
And so I kind of had a feeling that it would work out okay, so I was just going to go with it. So I am just going to go ahead and dry that with a heat gun because I am too impatient to sit there and wait for that to dry. I got a little bit of close with the heat gun and you can see that on the bottom. So here is the image that I was going off of. I printed this off and here you can see where I had tested it before and I drew it way too big. So I thought I better start with a smaller piece of fabric, but I will still use the practice drawing for a journal or put it on something. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna have to draw a whole lot smaller. <laughs> because that first one ended up being quite big but I know I will use it because it will make a great cover to a journal or to a pocket to some other project so this is officially my second time to draw the Mad Hatter from this image and so I kind of kind of had an idea but it was a lot harder drawing really small I mean it's it's tiny it's it's really tiny so I have gotten kind of used to drawing small with the artist trading cards um, I probably should have sharpened my pencil usually I do not draw with pencil so that was kind of kind of new for me usually I just go right on in with the sharpie so this was definitely something new but I thought since I was drawing really small I would just start it with a pencil and that way if I needed to make some changes I would anyway I knew I was going to be painting this so I wasn't really worried about the pencil marks and so it's just kind of a loose sketchy drawing and then I knew I would go in and add some details later so here I was just kind of <laughs> comparing it to the image before and realized all right I better cut my material down a lot smaller otherwise I'm going to end up with a really big Mad Hatter again so uh, cut me a smaller piece and that's when I decided yeah to heck with the pencil I'm gonna go straight for the sharpie like I normally do because the pencil I just I guess myself too much and I feel like I can just work through it when I go with the sharpie I hate to use an eraser I feel like when you do art you should be um, you should be free to do it and do it freely so I ditched the pencil and went straight for my sharpie and this time cut me a much smaller piece of fabric to work with that way I knew I would stay within the guidelines that I wanted to so you can already tell the difference in me drawing with a sharpie and with a pencil I believe I don't know what it is but I just have a hard time drawing with a pencil I think it's just because I second guess myself too much and I think oh well I can erase it if it's if it's messed up if I don't like it so that's why I've just kind of gotten in the habit to go with the Sharpie and I have never taken any drawing lessons and it is really obvious but I I have heard some people say that um, in classes they don't even want you to draw with a pencil they want you to start with a pen or something so I kind of just I learned that on my own and that's usually what I do. Every now and then I will do a sketch with the pencil, um, but even then it's usually a um, ink tint pencil or a scribble all pencil, um, stabilo all, sorry, stabilo all pencil. I love working with those. So those don't really erase either. You just um, add water to it and then you can move the lines out. I actually love working with stabilo all pencils. If you have never worked with one, I highly encourage you to do that. I actually believe I shared a tutorial a little bit on the Stabilo Wall pencils. Um, I think it was my February artist trading cards. No, it wasn't my February. It was my, oh, it's the ones where I did the sketchy flowers. Um, and then I used part of jelly prints in the background. I'll have to look. Maybe it was, let's, let's see, i got to think this through. I think it was my, it was May. It was May or June. That's what it was. It was my May or June artist trading cards. So if you want to see how I did my drawing with the Stabilo Wall, you can go check that out. But I may do an actual tutorial on a Stabilo Wall pencil um, because there's really a lot that you can do with that. So I think I will do that, just a separate, a separate video on that so you guys can see. So here I am trying to decide if 
I am making his legs really short, but actually in the image that I'm going off of, he is actually standing kind of wonky. So he's leaning with his stomach out with his back arched. And so I, I figured it worked. So next I had to make room for his other arm and the teapot. I didn't leave myself much room for the teapot, but I think it works just because um, it's a small image anyway, and really you kind of get the idea of what he's holding. Um, I wish I would have left myself just a little bit more room for the teapot, but I got to thinking about it. The teapot shouldn't be bigger than his head anyway, <laughs> so it really ended up being kind of the right dimensions. It was just hard to draw. And I really had a hard time drawing his fingers in there with that, with the teapot handle in there, but I think I made it work. I knew I was going to paint it anyway, so I just kind of did a sketchy outline with my Sharpie, and then I can go back in after I paint it and add some details. So it, it was a lot of fun to do. It was definitely an experimental process, but I love the way it turned out. So here I have my fancy palette. Normally I use um, some wax paper. I grabbed a variety of paints. Um, this one just happened to be the golden brand. I do not have very many golden paints as I find they are a little bit out of my budget, but I love this green gold and I knew it wouldn't take much of it. So I wanted to add that as the hat. It turned out really good in the sample one that I painted. So I wanted to do that again. So here I'm just painting away and adding that really pretty green gold olive color. I love that color. I think it is really pretty. And you know, if you've seen a lot, which I'm sure you probably have, a lot of the um, different illustrations of the Mad Hatter, you have the cartoon version where he's definitely, um, I don't know, he, he looks a lot different than the Johnny Depp version from the um, Tim Burton, Alice in Wonderland, and Through the Looking Glass. So I went with the cartoon version and where his hat was green. Um, but I also love the Johnny Depp one where his hat has that pink sash and it's more of a weathered brown. But I went with this one because I figured it would look good with the fabric that I was going to chose and I just liked it. So I figured I didn't really need much of a reason. <laughs> so here I'm using definitely some cheap craft paints. Um, and I didn't want it to be straight blue. I like to mix my colors. That way it all kind of has more of a cohesive feel, I guess I should say. So here I'm adding a little bit more because I wanted it straight that color. And I decided I wanted to add a little bit of this Bray Reese green. Um, so I'm kind of mixing that in. See, I have so many different brands going on. I have the cheap craft paint paints, I have the Bray Reese, I have the expensive golden paints, and I really just kind of have fun and I mix all the colors together. Um, that Bray Reese paint was really thick. It is a heavier body paint. So off to the side, I do have a little bowl of water and I just keep thinning my paints out that way. So I kind of like how his wonky shoes were, the little they look like clown shoes and I knew I wanted that color to be a little bit more bolder along with his bow tie. So his shirt ended up being a little bit lighter and that's what I was actually going for because I wanted the his bow tie to stand out a little bit. So I'm just mixing the colors off to the side and oh I also forgot I had this brand. This is that cheap brand they have at Target I believe. Wait no. Is this one at Target? I think this one's actually at Walmart. Yeah, this one's at Walmart. The Waverly brand, it's at by the Cheap Craft Paints. And I wanted the teapot to be um, a little bit more bright yellow. So um, I kept it, I diluted it a little bit more with water and I wanted it to stand out a little bit more because I knew that his jacket was going to have some yellow in it. So. For that, I decided to mix some of the green gold in with that goldenrod um, mustardy yellow color. That way I could get a really good color for the jacket. So I'm not using many colors, I'm just mixing them and making my own colors. So it kind of all ties together well and I just like it. I think it actually turned out 
turned out pretty good. Um, I actually like the bigger med header that I drew better, but I had more room to work with, and that one's not going to go to waste. I'm still going to use it, so eh, it, it was it was a fun practice round, and I, I love drawing anyway, so I thought it was fun practice. So here I grabbed the apple apple barrel. Um, it's a light gray color. I can't can't remember what color it was exactly, but. I wanted to give his hair a silver grayish gray feel, um, so that's what I'm doing here. And I knew I would go back in and add a little bit more details to that, so I was just kind of getting the outline of his hair in there. And the spoon, I wanted um, to have that silver gray color, but I wanted to mix a little bit of blue in there just so it would stand out. So, because I didn't want anything to be all the exact same color, but kind of have the same color scheme feel, if that makes sense. Obviously, I've never taken any art painting classes because I can't even describe what I'm trying to say, but hopefully it kind of makes sense. So here I grabbed a um, kind of a tan color from Apple Barrel, and um, I wanted to go in with his face. And I wanted it to, I didn't want it to be too dark. Um, so I'm just painting right over the Sharpie here because I like, again, I knew I was gonna go in and do some touch-ups. I just kind of started with the Sharpie to give myself a guideline on where to actually paint. So I'm trying to get those little fingers in there. And um, that was definitely easier doing that, just kind of doing some marks and then going back and adding it. And you have to have his pinky sticking up over there, so I had to fix that. So trying to give just a little bit of dimension in his face. Again, it's a really, really small drawing, so it, it was kind of hard to work with, but it was fun. I enjoyed it. Then I decided I needed a little bit of steam coming from the teapot. So I added a little bit of gray, um, that gray silverish color coming from the top of the teapot. And now I'm just blasting it with my heat, um, heat gun a little bit because I was ready to keep on going and I didn't want to wait. I did find when I first dried this that that polyester curls up if you get too close. I was really trying to speed it up, I guess, and got too close, and yeah, I ended up having to cut a piece off because it was curling up, but just blasted a little bit with my heat gun, and then I wanted to go ahead and get out some color pencils. Um, I just grabbed what was next to me, uh, some red, uh, orange, and a yellow, just to add a little bit of details here and there. Um, because I knew that I needed to do something with his mouth because I haven't really done anything on his mouth yet. Um, speaking of his mouth, I hadn't drawn his teeth yet, so I had to do his teeth, and I used my white Uniball Signo pen. If you have not got a white Uniball Signo pen, I highly suggest it. I buy these things by the bulk. I absolutely love them. So I'm coloring in the card on the top of his hat and um, trying to let those teeth dry. And I thought I would use Jane Davenport's paint over pen. And that just, I, I like those pens, but I went back to my Uniball Signo because all that really did was just kind of make that Sharpie um, get all messy under there, I guess I should say. so. My Uniball White Signo pen is definitely my favorite of my white pens. So if you don't have one of those, definitely try it out. At least get one to try it out, and I guarantee you, you will go back and get more. So I'm, I apologize, I'm a little off camera frame here. Um, I'm working with the camera overhead, but what I was doing is just adding some to his mouth, his tongue, and then some little orange details to the teapot. So after that dried, I knew I needed to go in and do some touch-ups, of course, with the Sharpie. And I apologize for being off camera um, a little bit. I was bringing it close to me, but I, you'll see in a minute the, the changes that I made. I just am basically 
fixing up his face a little bit, adding some, fixing his eyebrows and going over those facial features a little bit more, touching up his ears and the marks around his neck, trying to outline that hat and card a little bit because I just, I love Mad Hatter's hat and um, I wanted you to be able to tell what it was. I mean, you really kind of get the idea of what it's supposed to be anyway, but I wanted to add as much detail in there as I could. So here I'm just kind of outlining around his hair and just going back in and doing all the details that got covered up with paint. So that's the fun part of Sharpie. I just, if you haven't tried just drawing straight with the Sharpie instead of using a pencil, try to get in that habit because it really forces you to just go with it. And especially if you are going to be painting, you can always paint over it and then go back in and do touch-ups as I'm doing now. But it really just kind of forces you to get out of the fear of drawing. Um, I say that, but then at the same time, you're probably like, oh, I can't mess up. It's a Sharpie. But I really got over that fear and um, I love drawing with it now. So here I was trying to give him a little bit of a shoulder because I realized his arm was just out wonky. So I added that little bit of a shoulder, I guess is what it would be, and making some adjustments there. Here I think I realized, oh, I'm off on my frame. <laughs> so I'm trying to adjust his fingers here and make sure you can see that his little pinky is sticking up in the air because he was all fancy at that unbirthday party. <laughs> trying to work on those teeth, man, because I didn't draw those in to begin with. I feel like I did not do a good job on his teeth, but um, you'll see, I just kind of kind of keep messing with it, and I, I think it ended up being okay, but um, I can't believe I forgot to show his teeth when I first started drawing it. That's one thing that I absolutely love in the cartoon version, especially of the Mad Hatter, is those two big front teeth showing so I tried to just get that in there with my uniball signo and try to make the dividing line I guess between the teeth with the sharpie um, it's it was kind of hard to do because I didn't want to take away from his his lip line and his tongue in there so yeah it worked <laughs> here I decided I didn't really care for the white part I mean the gray steam so I added white to it so it would stand out a little bit even though yes I know steam doesn't really have much of a color but I was trying to you know just go with it so then I'm realizing wow that is a huge difference why did I think that other one would work before is beyond me but at least I have another one to use so I'm just peeling it off the piece of cardboard and that little cardboard is actually what came in the um, fat quarter material that I'm going to be doing my project with. So I decided I wanted to add something with it other than just the Mad Hatter. So I, I went with the quote, it's always tea time. So here I'm just kind of drawing it on there and I really didn't know if I was going to like this or not, um, but I wanted to have some type of text on there. And I think it would have been okay just having the Mad Hatter on there um, because, I mean, it's the Mad Hatter, right? You really don't need anything on there. And I was debating between putting something um, unbirthday or some other famous Mad Hatter quote, but it's always tea time since it's a tea bag wallet, I think was fitting. So I am just sketching over this. This was another piece of that prepped. Um, polyester that I used for the drawing and I just prepped it with that clear gesso just to prep the surface a little bit and it really made it easier to write on with my sharpie so I'm using a ultra fun sharpie here those are the ones I usually draw with I have a bag full of black sharpies I am always using black sharpies because that's what I do with my drawings so I knew I better go ahead and cut this out smaller and I wanted to see how it would look. So 
we were going to play around with that in the end and then in the end obviously you can see that I did something totally different but it definitely gave me a good jumping off point. I want to first mention that you do not have to have an illustration on the front of your tea bag wallet so keep that in mind as you are making yours. I hope that you guys enjoy this tutorial. Also keep in mind I am not an expert seamstress. I just kind of taught myself. The materials that you will need are a ruler to cut your fabric, a rotary cutter or a pair of fabric scissors. Um, I like to have both. I also have a pair of embroidery scissors just to cut my threads. You need a piece of interfacing. You're going to need four pieces of fabric. The interfacing and all four pieces of fabric all will measure seven and a half inches by five and a half inches. So I'm just getting this out of the way. You're going to need some pins and clamps. You're going to need a needle and thread to sew your button in place. A thin hair tie. Um, keep in mind you want to keep that thin because the thicker ones are hard. You're also going to need an iron and a sewing machine. And then if you want to add something on top, you're going to need your image. And then I decided to go with some fabric fuse to attach that. So I do not have my ironing board handy in front of me because I wanted to be able to record this process. So I just put down this um, felt to kind of protect my surface. So you want to first start off by ironing on your interfacing. You want to put it adhesive side down to the wrong side of the outer panel. So make sure it's the adhesive side down. So I'm going to test ironing on this because I really probably should have just set it up over my ironing board, but I wanted to be able to get a good angle for you guys. So you're just ironing that adhesive um, interfacing down and it's best to go from the center out. So just adhering that and this is to the outer panel. So then you're just going to sit that aside and then I noticed oh my goodness look at all the moisture that that left. So <laughs> trying to wipe that away and then I, I decided to do something different um, but it worked. And I'm just going through and trimming up that excess interfacing. I never do a good job when I am measuring. My rotary cutter blade is very dull. It is time to get a new one. So I just kind of eyeball it as best as I can. And then you will see me just making adjustments and trimming excess off along the way. So here I just went ahead and got a little cloth towel instead of that other because Man, that just left so much moisture. So you're going to set your interfacing fabric aside. Next, you're going to fold your two lining panels in half lengthwise. You're going to put the wrong sides together. So fold it wrong sides together. And you're going to press and crease that fold with the iron. And then give it a little bit of steam just to help keep that crease in place. So steam is your friend. So you're going to do that to both pieces, wrong sides together, and remember these are your inner lining panels. This is what will be the pockets of your tea bag. So just give that a little bit of steam and crease right there on the fold. Make sure that is good. Um, that towel obviously was leaving a really line mark on there. I probably should have did the ironing board, but all for the sake of the video, right? <laughs> I really noticed that there was still so much extra moisture. <laughs> I like the fabric colors I chose. I think that green polka dot was going to look really good with the black. So I was just kind of making sure I like that first. Next, you're going to take both lining pieces over to your sewing machine. And on the folded side, on the folded side, you're going to sew a straight stitch all the way down the length of the panel and with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I do not have fancy sewing machine feet, um, so I just kind of have to keep adjusting mine. So mine is totally approximate. So approximate quarter inch seam allowance, and you're gonna do that to both of the inside panels all the way down the folded side. So just a basic straight stitch all the way down. 
So you can probably tell I taught myself how to sew. Whenever my husband bought me this sewing machine, we signed me up for some basic classes. And then the lady decided to move town. So she decided to go leave. So I never got my sewing classes. So I bought the sewing machine and really just kind of taught myself. Um, I know most of you that are watching this, you're probably like, what are you doing? There are easier ways, but this is just kind of how I did it. So, and it worked. So you're just going to snip those extra threads and clean it up a little bit. And I'm trying to work in a small place to keep all this on film, so I'm just scooting my sewing machine over. Next, you're going to take your lining panels, and you're going to take one lining panel and place it on the right side of the inner panel. Now, this is going to be the panel without the interfacing. So on the right side, you're going to put it on about one inch from the bottom with the raw edges on the bottom. So keep the folded part along the top and just pin that in place. Unless you feel like you can do it without pinning. Of course, I pinned it in place. And then you're gonna take that over to the sewing machine and you're gonna sew along the raw edge again, but this time along the raw edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. So approximately quarter inch. <laughs> Eventually I will get me some more sewing machine feet, but it works for now. Trying to get those threads everything was all getting stuck every time I go to record it makes it makes it a little complicated but that's just how it works right so cut off any excess threads and remove the pins and then you're going to take your second lining panel and line the raw edges up on the bottom of the inner panel and pin in place so make sure those raw edges just line up with the bottom of the inner panel And this time you are going to sew together with approximately an eight inch seam allowance. And you do an eight inch on this one just so it doesn't show very much in the finished product. Again, mine is totally approximate, so it is, you know, just kind of eyeballing it. So sew along the raw edge, just a basic straight stitch again. So on the top one it doesn't matter, so I left the quarter inch on the top one, but the bottom one be sure and try to leave approximately the one inch, one eighth inch seam allowance. My sewing machine was giving me fits, but I'm also trying to look over my camera, so I gotta figure up a better way to record when I'm doing sewing projects because the way I'm having to lean over was, <laughs> was kind of hard. So snip all those excess threads and remove the pins. And just check everything out and then you're gonna fold it in half with the right sides together. So just fold it directly in half, right sides together. And I'm just making sure I put that cloth down to protect my surface because you are want to take your iron and just give yourself a really good crease on that fold. Um, I also used steam here just because that helps with the crease. And this will give you the guideline of the center of the wallet, kind of like a book. So that crease is really helpful because that is the line that you're going to want to sew. So take it over to your sewing machine and sew along the guideline that you just made yourself from the bottom edge to the top of the lining with a back stitch at the top. So you don't really need the back stitch at the bottom, but you do want to go ahead and add that back stitch at the top. So you're, you're going to stop at that little lining piece where the pocket actually ends.
Then of course, snip off all those extra threads just to clean it up a little bit. Then you wanna take your hair tie. You wanna kinda of use a thin hair tie and you're gonna line it up with the top part of the bottom pocket. So on the right side of the inner panel and you're just gonna hang it over the side just a little bit. Now there's kind of, this is kind of a tricky process because it wants to move on you. So the part to the left of my finger is what's going to go around the button. So to the, the part on the right is what's gonna be cut off. So you wanna make sure and allow yourself enough room. So now the hard, it wasn't really hard, but it was definitely tricky trying to get that sewn on. So I'm trying to make sure I have enough room on the side for my image as well as my button. And it looks like I had left myself enough room. So I felt like it was easiest after a little bit of messing with it to put the presser foot down directly on top of the hair tie and then just kind of use my scissors, my sharp pair of embroidery scissors and just kind of force that under there because you want it to lay flat. Um, you want it to have a nice smooth edge um, and then you just stitch directly over that and with a little back stitch on it to hold it in place. So I just use the scissors just to kind of keep that pushed up there. So just sew directly over it with a little bit of a back stitch. And you want to gonna leave about just a, an eight inch seam allowance. You don't want to leave yourself much on this as well. So just as close to the edge um, as you can, about an eighth, about an eight inch seam allowance was, was what I used and it worked out fine. So make sure that is nice and secure in place. Move my sewing machine out of the way so I can see what I got left. And it looks like that was going to be good. So next you're gonna to wanna to cut off that excess part of the hair tie. So cut off any excess threads that you have on there. And that part to the right is what's gonna be cut off. So I just cut it flush with the fabric, making sure that you don't go into that stitch mark. Next you're gonna take your outer panel and put right sides together on top of that panel and clip it all the way around. You want to be sure and leave a little opening, that way you can pull it through. So if you could see up at the top that I had left, that little bit of opening, that way I can pull it, pull it through when I'm finished. So right sides together, so you see here the inner facing is on top. And it is just clipped in place, and you sew it all the way around with approximately a quarter inch seam allowance. And just remove the clips as you go. So it is important to, to leave yourself a couple inches because you want to make sure that you can actually flip that out the right way. Here I'm actually sewing over that part of the hair tie. So make sure that you can feel the hair tie underneath because you want it to be going um, straight. I mean, you can kind of see it there. It's, it's thin fabric. So make sure that that is well adjusted as you are doing your stitch because once you've sewn all around it, unless you wanna go and rip all those seams, <laughs> that would be a little harder to adjust. So just go around the corners. Um, again, nothing on this is perfect. And remove your clips as you go. I really like these clips. I use pins all the time. Um, these clips are kind of expensive, so I only have this small set, but Really, I don't need to pin that much more at once anyway. So you're gonna go right up to that mark and then I just did a little back stitch just to keep it in place because um, I'm a little rough when it goes to flipping it the right way. So cut off all excess threads. And then you can see I left myself 
a couple inches up at the top to flip that the right way. So I'm just cleaning it up. I have a lot of little excess threads everywhere. And here is where I started to goof. I flipped it and I kept this on the video because I wanted to show you guys. So I flipped it through and then I remembered after I flipped it all the way around that I forgot to cut the corners. <laughs> so here I am still working through it, trying to flip it all the way around. And you don't have to clip the corners, but it definitely helps remove some of that excess bulk and give you a little bit nicer corners. Now, I wasn't really going for super straight ones anyway, and here is where I realized, okay, you need to cut the corner. So it's obviously a little wrinkled, and basically you just cut right off those corners. It doesn't have to be perfect, and make sure you don't cut into your seam allowance, those, uh, your stitch line. So cut your corners just to take off that excess bulk. Find your opening and flip it the right way. And you can always use a barbecue skewer or chopsticks or anything sharp and just to kind of help poke out those corners a little bit. Again, my corners aren't super pointy, um, but I'm fine with that. I think they turned out really good, um, especially teaching myself how to sew. I'm, I'm just fine with that. They didn't, they didn't have to be perfect. I, I really like how it turned out. One, one corner wasn't as good as the others, but um, again, I was happy with it. So just make sure that you have it all poked out and those using a chopstick or again, a wooden dowel or barbecue skewer or something, even the pencil, anything that you can stick in there to help really, really helps get those out. So now you're going to want to close up that opening. Take your time with this part because this is the finishing part. So take your time with it, line up those edges, make sure that it is folded in nice and neat. Just tuck all those, the thread in, make sure it is lined up really nice. I definitely took my time with this part because you don't want to just wing it at the very end because well, obviously you can kind of wing it. I, I wing everything I think that I make, but I really took my time with this because I wanted to make sure that it was finished up nice. So after I tucked those edges in, I just gave it a really good press just to kind of help hold it in place. I had forgot to put my protector down, but it looked like I didn't damage my surface. So that was good. Just a little bit of excess moisture and then take it to your sewing machine and I started right above where that opening was. So right above where the opening was and now you're just going to do a top stitch, a basic top stitch all the way around. This will be sure and not only close up that opening but it also gives it a nice finished look. So just work all the way around the corners. Um, I went about an eighth of an inch seam allowance because I really wanted to make sure that opening was closed and I didn't want to take away from the pockets anymore. So it's about an eight inch seam allowance all the way around. And here, since my corners were a little bit more rounded than pointy, I was trying to round out my stitches that way it, that way it just kind of went together a little bit. I didn't want super straight stitches with rounded corners, so I was trying to round out my stitches a little bit, making sure that everything is folded nicely. Just finishing that up, adding a little bit of a back stitch, and then cutting off your excess threads. So trimming off all those extra threads. 
and we are getting close to being done so I was making sure that it was closed up nicely and it was so I'm just cutting all those threads next you want to see where you want to attach the button so I am just folding it one last time and giving it a good crease with my iron pressing it really firmly and again I forgot to put my my protector down thank goodness it didn't ruin my surface and you want to see where you want to attach that button now if you do not know how to attach a shank button um, I actually did a little tutorial over that because I was never taught how to sew on a button so I had to teach myself how to sew on a button um, so if you are interested in a basic tutorial on that you can check out that video it will be played saved in my playlist so main thing with this is you want to make sure that your finger is on the inside of that pocket that way you don't sew up that pocket so again if you need to see how to sew on a button because I didn't show that in this video please go check out that tutorial um, I just sewed on a shank button in this one so here I decided if how I wanted to put the Mad Hatter on there so I laid him on there and I thought well it's cute do I like that it's always tea time I feel like it just wasn't I don't know it, it was almost just too square <laughs> if that makes sense I wanted it to stand out a little more so that's when I decided to fussy cut so luckily this polyester fabric since it was prepped with that clear gesso it was really easy to cut with these little embroidery scissors so I just snipped all the way around him and did a quick fussy cut all the way around him so again if you do not want to put anything on the front of yours you don't have to you can call it done at this step um, I have already since this video made several more of these um, because I wanted to give some away as gifts and then I just I just wanted to practice a little bit more too they were really fun to make once you get the hang of it you can actually make them pretty quick and again I'm not an expert seamstress so I'm sure if you are much better at sewing than I am then the process will go a lot smoother I know when I wasn't recording it definitely went better um, I wasn't sitting at that weird angle but I wanted to be able to show you guys a look at my sewing machine as I'm sewing um, so I hope that's helpful let me know if that was even helpful for you guys or if you even needed to see that part I feel like when you make a video there's always at least one person that needs to see it because again I taught myself how to sew based on watching YouTube tutorials so if any little tip or trick that I do can help somebody else then I'm all for it so I decided to show it along with keeping in the blooper of forgetting to cut the corner so I figured if it helps somebody else out my errors or tips or tricks that I learn then I might as well keep it in so the other ones that I made I am not <laughs> I'm not at a weird angle and as you all know I have a horrible back and horrible pain so trying to sit at that angle was really awkward so I've got to figure out my husband actually bought me a really nice tripod um, for Mother's Day and that is what I do my overhead filming with and it does so many different angles I mean this tripod I I love love this tripod I record with my phone and so I have a little attachment that goes to the tripod um, but I fit I think I need to figure out the best way to set it up um, around my desk so I don't have to sit at that awkward angle the problem is the desk that I usually work at I have a lot of surfaces that I can work at and sew at in my art studio but the desk that I usually sit and sew at um, is a u-shape so trying to get the tripod over there and record at that angle I just haven't quite figured it out yet <laughs> but it works hopefully you guys can tell so I definitely like the fussy cut better and I really wasn't liking 
how the steam was looking on there. It just kind of looks like a blob. So <laughs> I went ahead and cut it off and I was trying to decide if I wanted to attach it separate or not at all. And I decided not at all that I would just draw it in. And then I was trying to decide if I liked how that was square, the it's always tea time up at the top. And I thought, well, <laughs> maybe I will draw it. And thankfully it turned out okay. Um, I just drew it on with my Uniball Signo, my white Uniball Signo. And I just kinda, I was going to go straight across and then I thought no, because I will probably accidentally not write straight. So then I thought, well, maybe I will do a curve, kind of like curve it around the image. And then I thought, I'm recording this, which means it probably will be at a really weird curve. So I figured the best solution was to just write it wonky to begin with. <laughs> so I'm just kind of rotating my fabric as I go on writing this. And I think it worked out well. Now, obviously, I have not treated this final piece to a wash it, so I probably will not throw this in the washing machine. I know there is a finish that I could put over it um, to do a hand wash, but I'm kind of scared. Would you guys put a finish on top? I mean, really, do you need to wash it? I mean, it's just going to be thrown in my purse. I don't know. Actually, I'm probably going to give this away as a gift. I'm going to be doing a, well, I don't want to give that away. Just stay tuned. There's going to be something fun coming for Amy's Art Alchemy over on my Instagram as well as my YouTube. And this is probably going to be in that gift. So you can decide if you want to put a finish. I was trying to decide if I wanted to put the exclamation point or if I wanted to leave it as is and I just decided to leave it as is. So I went ahead and attached this on there. I was originally going to do stitch it on and then I thought, no, I'm going to, obviously I would have needed to stitch it on before I put the project together. And then I decided, no, I was just going to put some fabric adhesive on there. And of course I haven't used that in a really long time. So I had to go clean out that lid and get all that gunk out. So this was a lot of little details. As you can see, that Mad Hatter is the size of my finger. So a little bit bigger than the size of my finger. So he's kind of small. So I was trying to see here if that fabric fuse was going to end up blurring the paint on the inside. And at first it was because I was pressing a little hard. So I just put it on with the lighter touch and directly on that polyester. So this is just Fabric Fuse. It is a quick bond fabric adhesive. It is a permanent fabric adhesive, so it should stay on in place uh, for whoever receives this. If you decide to wash it, I would just put um, a sealer over it just to be safe or not wash it at all. So I'm just pressing that down, trying to get all those little edges um, I didn't want it to go, I didn't want the adhesive to go all over the book, but I wanted all of the little tiny edges to stay down. So, so much in trying to work with a little piece of fabric like that. Um, and then at this point I was kind of scared I was going to mess it up and I thought, why not use this little skewer, or this little barbecue skewer to help work down those, those pieces and help get that glue in those fine pieces. And I was glad I did that because that was, that was, that was brilliant. <laughs> I was proud of myself for having something handy and coming up with something um, that could help work that in. So I'm just making sure that all the little side pieces are pressed down, lifting any edges up with the barbecue skewer and folding that and pressing that back down. And that kind of helped so my finger wasn't pushing down on it and messing anything up or getting sticky or I was scared to ruin any of it at this point. So I am just 
Sorry if you hear my dog in the background. So I'm just kind of pressing down those edges with the skewer and making sure that is nice and secure. So I think it turned out really well. So I noticed the top of the teapot, of course, right when I put the lid on, needed just a little bit more. And so I'm just making sure that is on there. And I went and tested all the little edges just to make sure they were all all good. So lots of time with this part, but I, I didn't want to go through the whole process and then my Mad Hatter not be adhered on there really well. Um, I guess if I had more adhesive bond to just iron him on there, that would have been a good idea. But I feel like this fabric fuse worked really well and it's a permanent adhesive. So I, I think it was a good choice. It was just a little bit, little bit time consuming, but at this point I wanted to make sure and take my time to make sure it was adhered on there really well. This time you probably hear my little Yorkie in the background. Last time it was Maisie, this time it is Maggie in the background. <laughs> she is wanting my attention. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. So now I am just showing you the finished product, how it all looks, and it is time to fill it up now with the tea bags. So I realized that I needed to add a little bit of detail to that spoon only because it probably didn't catch anybody else's eye, but I wanted you to be able to tell that it was an actual spoon. So I added that little bit of detail in there, making a little bit more adjustments to him. I kept finding little things that I wanted to make better, like, you know the saying, just leave well enough alone? <laughs> I couldn't do that, apparently. So I wanted to fix his teeth a little bit because I felt like his teeth were not showing well. So I made a little bit of adjustments to his teeth. And then I was like, oops, too much. <laughs> So I was taking it off with the skewer, whitening up his collar, and then I thought, I do want steam on there with the teapot. So this time, instead of doing it with the fabric, I just drew some directly on there with the Uniball Signo, and I think that actually looked better. Looked better than that, the fabric part of the steam that I was going to do. For some reason, that just looked like a blob. Um, so thankfully drawing the steam looked better so I thought I better put the sharpie away and quit messing with it so now it's time to fill it up I practiced with the tea bags that my friend Marissa sent me from Ireland just to see how nicely it fit in there and it worked out great so I hope that you guys like this tutorial I would love to see if you make one um, leave me a comment let me know if you're following me on Instagram, tag me if you make one. Please like, share, subscribe if you are not already. Um, I would love to hear what you guys think. I have several more tips, tricks, and tutorials up my sleeve. So I hope that you guys come back and like this video. And I hope that you all are happy, healthy, and well. And we will talk to you all later. As always, happy crafting.